Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Clayton County Library System virtual program. In celebration of Black History Month, we are talking a lot about health and wellness, wellness in the Black community. And today we have Miss Crystal Reese, who is a doula here in Clayton County, and she is going to be presenting to us um, all everything you need to know about doulas and your pregnancy. Welcome, Miss Reese. Thank you. Um, good morning. I'm Crystal, as she said. Um, I am a local doula here in Clayton County. Um, and today I will be hopefully giving you some information on what a doula is and how we support your pregnancy. Sorry, they move fast. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I am the owner of Wild Birth Partum Care. Um, I am a certified labor doula as well as postpartum doula. And I'm also a licensed practical nurse. Um, I'm what they call a full spectrum doula. That means I support families from fertility to conception, labor, um, and postpartum amongst a wide array of needs throughout pregnancy. Um, I am a student midwife and I currently attend National College of Midwifery. Um, I strive for a more inclusive care, um, which means I do not have any discriminations in terms of race, sexual orientation, or anything in between. Um, I am a trained pill advocate. Um, so that means I support pregnancy and infant loss, and as well as a trauma-informed doula. Um, and I try to support families in terms of uh, trauma in relation to birth trauma or trauma outside of that. Um, I've supported a number of families uh, as, as well as I facilitate a mentorship program um, for new birth workers. Yeah. So we'll get right into it. Today's learning objectives, we'll talk about the functions and benefits of a doula, the difference between a doula and a midwife, the history of birth work in the African-American community, community uh, stats in Georgia as it relates to pregnant and expectant families, uh, how to effectively advocate and communicate for yourself and tips for a healthy pregnancy and resources for expectant families. So what is a doula? A doula is a trained companion, somewhat like a support person. Um, we support families through childbirth, um, pregnancy loss, um, postpartum, whatever you can think during pregnancy or outside of pregnancy, we try to support families. Um, we provide a number of um, services. And if you ask your doula what all she does, I'm pretty sure the list is as long as a grocery list. So the types of support doulas offer. Um, so doulas offer emotional, educational, psychological, physical support, as well as advocacy and support for your partners. Um, we try to create, as we go through each of the supports that your doula may offer, we'll talk about what that looks like during your pregnancy. So when we talk about emotional support, um, a lot of us during pregnancy go through an array of emotions, um, angry, anxious, happy, sad, you name it, we probably experience it. Um, what your doula does is she helps keep you grounded during that moment, that time. Um, a lot of us feel like it's a tornado. You have a lot of stuff coming your way. A lot of people telling you what pregnancy looks like, what labor looks like. It can be overwhelming. And your doula helps to keep your mind stabilized so that you can enjoy pregnancy as it comes your way. Um, educational support. So most doulas, if not all doulas, really strive for a more evidence-based um, support when it comes to education. Our resources are usually resources that we've learned over the course of our um experience, as well as resources that we've gathered that have been proven and is vetted by professionals. 
Um, so yes, it's like Google, but you kind of know that the information that you're being provided um, is vetted. Um, and we help simplify it. Sometimes the information is a lot and it's overwhelming. So we really help simplify it based on your learning style. We want to make sure that not only are you receiving adequate information about your pregnancy, but also that you understand it and that you can apply it to your birth plan. This is non-medical advice. So we don't tell you what to do um, and how to do something in your pregnancy. We provide you with the tools and the information that you can, that way you can make the best decision for yourself. Um, psychological support. Um, so of course, again, that psycho-emotional um, needs that are caused by triggers and fears and traumas during your pregnancy. Um, we make sure that we have enough maternal mental health support resources to make sure that you during your pregnancy can have adequate care. We're not psychiatrists. We're not therapists. We are here to listen and help you attain, obtain those resources for more professional services. And in terms of physical support, this comes in the, in, in the view of comfort measures, labor position, breathing and massage techniques. Um, we offer different um, like aromatherapy and suggestions on how to ease the surges of contractions during labor, as well as discomforts throughout pregnancy. Um, advocacy. A lot of us say that we advocate for you um, during your pregnancy, but what we really do is we try to teach you how to advocate for yourself successfully. Basically, stand up for your own needs, um, how to communicate with clinicians um, and the hospital staff so that you receive um, the care that, that fits your desires. Um, a lot of people are marginalized, and so when you feel like you don't know something, you kind of shut down at your visits, at the hospitals. Um, and we give you, we, we empower you um, to speak up for yourself when you feel like something is not being provided to you in the way that you would, would, you would prefer. And in terms of partner support, whatever that looks like, whatever that partner looks like, whether it's a spouse or a family member, or a child or your doula, we encourage those partners to participate at a comfort level that's right for you and right for them. We want to have a environment of inclusion and we don't take over the role as your support person. We are in addition to your birth team, but we support the whole family. Our main goal is that all families receive equitable and autonomous care. Autonomous care is defined as care that is based off of your needs and your desires. We teach our, our clients how to have in, make informed decisions. That means when you have a decision to make, you know all of the aspects of that possible outcomes. That way you can make the best decision for yourself. So we teach the BRAIN method. It's an acronym and it stands for benefits, risk, interventions. Sorry, my computer froze. So we teach the BRAIN method. B stands for benefits. What are the benefits of this possible intervention? What benefits you by receiving this intervention? And R stands for risks. What are the risks associated rec with receiving this intervention? I stands for possible other interventions. What other interventions can you receive? And N stands for nothing. You can do nothing. You can make no decision and you can allow more time for yourself to think more adequately about this.
So what are the benefits of having a doula? Okay. In the state of Georgia, the cesarean rate is extremely high, especially for first-time parents. Having a doula helps decrease the overall cesarean rate by 50%. We shorten the length of labor by 25%. Most first-time parents experience labor anywhere from 12 to 24 hours and even more. We decrease the need for pain medication interventions. Women are more, more, less likely to receive pain medications such as Pitocin or epidural. A little bit more statistics. Um, Women experience a decrease in the risk of being dissatisfied with their birth experience by 34%. The risk of newborns needing to be admitted to a special care nursery by 14%. And the increase of a spontaneous vaginal birth by 12%. These statistics and other information can be found at evidencebasedbirth.com. What are the differences in a doula and a midwife? So this is a really important aspect that we try to educate about um, because we often have people who inquire about things like home birth. And as a doula, we are here to support you, but in a non-clinical fashion. And so midwives and doulas really work in tangent with one another in providing care we don't take over the role of the other. We're two sides of the same coin. That coin is your care. So what is the difference between a doula and a midwife? Doulas are non-clinical support. We provide physical, emotional, and informational support. Midwives provide medical care in the home or hospital setting. They provide clinical services, pelvic exams, fetal monitoring, and more. Our both ventured goal is to provide exceptional care for expectant families. The midwifery philosophy of care is to provide an alternative to obstetrics care within the hospital system. There are three types of midwives. Um, you have certified nurse midwives who are midwives who have went through nursing school and have attained a master's degree. You have direct entry midwives who only went to school for midwifery. And then you have traditional midwives. These are the midwives who have been doing this work probably all of their lives <laughs> and they have gained the knowledge through actual life experience. The goal of a midwife is to monitor physical, psychological, and social well-being of a mother throughout the childbearing cycle. Providing the mother with individualized educational counseling and prenatal care. Continuous hands-on support during labor and delivery and postpartum support. They minimize, minimize technological interventions such as epidurals, pitocin, or even the need of cesareans. This is ideal for low risk pregnancies and accommodates alternative setting, birth settings such as a home birth or birth centers. You have a more intimate relationship with your pro provider and more in-depth visits. Whereas your obstetric visit is anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes, your visit with your midwife can be up to an hour or more as they explore all the intricate details of your life in order to give you the birth experience that you want. The application of a women-centered model of care has been proven to reduce incidents of birth injury, trauma, and cesarean sections. The history of birth work in Georgia. Georgia has a really in-depth history around the birth work and midwifery model of care. Pat, prior to World War II, grand midwives or granny midwives were responsible for most maternal maternity care until white doctors wanted to institutionalize midwifery. 
More restrictions, high fines, and literacy requirements discourage midwives with limited education or limited formal education from offering care, even though the communities had limited access to maternity care in the Jim Crow era. Eventually denying direct entry midwives, the number of midwives shrunk from 5,000 to 20 active midwives. Increased restrictions to this date have limited the type of midwives that can provide care in Georgia. At this time in Georgia, the only type of midwife that is able to practice is a certified nurse midwife. There are a number of midwives that are able to offer care, but due to the, the restrictions placed on them in Georgia, it is illegal for them to provide care. Our goal is to change that. Currently, Georgia is one of 15 states that does not allow direct entry midwives nor traditional midwives to practice. Changes to legisl legislation hope to change the face of maternity care in Georgia. Two very important laws will make it so direct entry midwives or community midwives to provide home birth care as well as accept insurance payments to offset the financial burden. If you would like to learn more about this legislation, please visit www.georgiacpm.org. The future of birth work is being written as we speak. The more we educate ourselves, the bigger the impact. As we continue to rally for equitable care and access to a variety of maternal care options, we provide safe and autonomous support to all families in Georgia. Home births are on the rise. And in 2020, home birth stats increased by 29%. This does not include out-of-pocket clients, out of pay out-of-pocket clients. The number continues to rise as we see home births with a midwife and doula support to prove to provide safe and viable options. What's the problem? The problem is black women are two to three times more likely to die due to pregnancy related reasons compared to the other reasons. 42% of pregnancy related deaths occur within the first week to first year after delivery. There are many causes for these um, deaths. It's hard to visualize what these complications, when these complications can occur, but knowing them can help us be proactive for your prenatal care. So we have different, obviously different reasons, cardiomyopathy, infection, hemorrhaging, blood clots, strokes, amniotic fluid embolisms. These are just a number of reasons why women perish through childbirth. As a doula, our goal is to help you identify risk factors as well as symptoms that could give us an early detection that you are experiencing one of these symptoms or one of these disorders. So this discusses how to active, effectively and advocate and communicate for yourself, being fully informed about your options. This allows you to have early interventions for issues such as cardiomyopathy or mental health issues. Advocating for yourself during pregnancy. What does that look like for you? When you find out you're pregnant, there are a lot of things that go through your mind. Where do you start? What do you do? And hopefully this will give you somewhat of a guideline to help you decide how you can be supported the best during your pregnancy. So the first thing I tell families to do is to determine your birth setting. Let's say you want to have a home birth or you want to have a birth center. Deciding that helps you decide what type of provider you need to reach out to. If you're looking for a home birth, 
you will probably need to reach out to a midwife versus an OB. If you want to have a hospital birth, you, you could probably have a midwife, but you're most likely going to need an obstetrician. Usually we start with our providers and then we explore our birth setting options. We find our providers may not support this option. So think out your ideal birth experience and then fill your team into that experience. Once you decide on where you want to have your baby, you then want to start to build your birth team. You want to interview and you want to hire that birth team. So do you know that you're, you can hire your team? Yes, that's true. We work for you. Your doula, your midwife, your OB all work for you. You pay your provider. So that means you get to choose the provider that supports you. And you want to choose a provider that aligns with your beliefs and your desires and has safe birth stats. Once you've selected your team, then you want to try to attend a childbirth and lactation education class. So in order for you to make informed decisions, you have to first know what options you have. Childbirth education and lactation classes help you explore many facets of pregnancy and breastfeeding. Once you take a class, you will find out that there are more aspects to birth that you didn't know. And if your goal is to breastfeed, it's so important to educate yourself prior to actually having the baby so that once the baby arrives, you can start to use that education to help support you. Once you've attended a childbirth education and lactation class, you want to write out a detailed birth and postpartum plan. A lot of times we hear about birth plans and we rarely hear about postpartum plans, but they are just as important. And creating one is, helps to have an effective and safe postpartum experience. Once you decide on your birth setting and your team, you and you are aware of what your options are, you will begin to build this birth and postpartum plan. This helps you have clear and concise goals. After you've created your birth plan and your postpartum plan, you wanna be involved in your care. Ask questions, research your desires, use evidence-based sources. Ask your provider questions, ask your doula questions. If you are unclear about something and you wanna know more, they are here to help you. But if they don't know that you need this information, they cannot provide you this help. So please ask as many questions as you possibly can. We empower making informed choices. We want you to have a beautiful and informed birth experience. So tips for a healthy pregnancy. The physiology of pregnancy, what does that mean? So we need to know what's normal. We need to know what ex things you're experiencing during your pregnancy is expected. If those things aren't expected, we need to know what you need to do to get support. You're having changes in your body and you don't exactly know if they're normal or not. That's when your doula comes in and we help you. So it's okay to ask questions. Yes, it is normal to ex may experience nausea and vomiting. What's not normal is to experience this far past the postpartum, far past the first trimester. If you're experiencing nausea past the first trimester, then that's not normal. And you may be experiencing hyperemesis. And this is something that you need to speak to your provider about. And that's just one of the many things that we experience during pregnancy that we may not know is not normal and we should seek help on. So learning the physiology of pregnancy will help us decide what is normal so that when we are experiencing something that's not normal, we'll be able to identify that. This comes with receiving that childbirth education that I was talking about. Going to a childbirth education class will help you know what is normal and what is abnormal during pregnancy. And always track your symptoms. If they seem like they're escalating in severity, you want to make sure that you're tracking them day to day and see what are the things that are causing it, what lifestyle changes that could be taking place to help improve it. 
And if there's nothing that helps improvement, then of course you wanna make sure that you're contacting your provider so that you can help get it resolved. Then we talk about nutrition and healthy choices. So nutrition has such an impact on pregnancy and it really does change how you experience pregnancy. There are holistic remedies that you can choose from that will help with symptoms of nausea, symptoms of pain and aches that you experience on your body. So you want to really dive into the nutritional aspect of pregnancy. What things should you be eating? How much should you be drinking? What medicines and prenatal supplements are suggested during pregnancy? You really want to make sure that you are speaking with a nutritionist if that's available to you. And if not, contact your doula. We have an array of options for you so that you can have a satisfying yet nutritionist birth experience. And then we talk about alternative prenatal providers. A lot of the times we go through pregnancy and all we think we need is our doctor. And that is not true. Aside from your doula, aside from a midwife, there are other prenatal providers that are here to help you and support different ailments during pregnancy. A chiropractor, for one, is one that is highly suggested as it helps with alignment of the spine and the hip, which make labor easier, as well as chiropractic adjustments help um, address different symptoms during pregnancy that can help alleviate those. So you should be seeing a chiropractor regularly if it's available to you. Then another thing is a pelvic floor therapist. Pelvic floor therapists are exactly what they sound like. They are therapists that help strengthen the pelvic floor. During pregnancy, a lot of people experience what they call diastasis recti. That is the separation of the abdominal wall, as well as weakened pelvic floors. Seeing a pelvic floor therapist will help you not only have an easier pregnancy and easier labor, but minimize the symptoms of a weakened pelvic floor in the postpartum. A lot of the times we don't know that what we're experiencing is due to a weak pelvic floor. And so we go along thinking that this is a normal aspect of childbirth. Incontinence is not normal for a postpartum. Pain with sexual intercourse is not normal. Seeing a pelvic floor therapist can hopefully reverse any of those symptoms and strengthen the pelvic floor. Womb care is very vital during pregnancy and in the postpartum. And then prenatal yoga. Prenatal yoga is super important as it helps strengthen and relax the muscles, hopefully making pregnancy and the symptoms that associate with pregnancy a lot less, you know, stressful. So seeing a prenatal yoga um, provider will allow you different stretches and movements that will hopefully um, take away any pain and, and offer stretching um, methods that make um, labor easier for you. So resources available um, during pregnancy. So there are a ton of resources. This is just a handful of resources. Um, you can screenshot this, but th th this is just a handful. Um, uh, at the top, you'll see grants for support. There are tons of organizations. I can only list two right now, um, but there are a ton of organizations that provide funds to receive to hire a doula. Um, Mama Glow Love Delivered, um, in a conjunction with Carol's daughter, has a, a birth and postpartum doula grant for families of color, um, as well as Sister Song. Sister Song is uh, located here in Georgia. And they have a birth justice care fund that provides um, funds for doulas, for midwives, as well as baby supplies. Um, all of these grant programs are on a rolling basis. So they may or may not have funds available, but that should not discourage you from applying because once funds become available, they are very quick to disperse those funds. At this time, Mama Glow has closed for their winter. 
um, but have their applications for summer and spring open. So please go apply. Um, they will sign, they will get you connected with doulas here in Georgia um, to be able to provide services for you, whether it's birth or postpartum. Um, they will um, provide doula services for postpartum families. So if you've already had your baby, but you still feel like you need postpartum services, they will provide postpartum doula support for uh, um, up into one year old. So if your baby's up to one, you can still receive um, postpartum support. Um, and in terms of education, so there are a lot of um, childbirth education classes out there, um, but these are just some that are free to you um, and they are very involved and impactful. So Pampers has a free childbirth class as well as a ton of childbirth ed uh, education resources, trackers and uh, eBooks that you can use throughout your pregnancy. Another well-known childbirth education class is Nakia Lawson. You can pretty much just search Nakia Lawson in Google and she should pull right up. And she offers free childbirth classes. Um, there are four sessions, they're virtual um, and a lot of people like to use them. And in terms of lactation, so of course you got La Leche League, um, that's more so global. Um, and they provide a ton of resources, free classes online, um, and ways to help improve your uh, breastfeeding journey. But if you're looking for something more local, please feel free to reach out to Kiana Ayers with Mamas and Tatas. She is a Lamaze, um, a Lamaze provider as well as an IBCLC. Um, she provides lactation support um, and childbirth education. And then you also have Sterling Gray. She is a breastfeeding specialist and she is the owner of Loyal Lactation. She provides um, home visits as well as assisting with um, milk donors. So if you're having an issue with breastfeed, uh, breastfeeding or getting um, donor milk, she has support for you to receive um, donor milk. Um, and in terms of things for postpartum, Postpartum Support International is an organization that helps to address um, maternal mental health. They provide um, support groups for, you name it, they provide a support groups. They have support groups for fathers. They have support groups for people who had babies, um, people who are experiencing any kind of postpartum mood and anxiety disorders, such as depression or anxiety. Um, they have support groups for pr pregnancy loss, um, military families, um, family, Hispanic families. Um, they have support groups for just about every group. Um, they definitely have a support group for um, moms of color, so African-American moms. Um, so that's a, you just go to postpartum.net and you should be able to find um, whatever postpartum support group you may think, and they have been proven to be very helpful. Um, Pickles and Ice Cream is also another wonderful organization. They are um, hosted by Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies, Georgia, and they provide free childbirth education, free maternal mental health meetings, free postpartum education. And with those classes, you do receive gift cards um, for attending. Um, and then this is just a, a, a couple of other websites that you can use that um, help you just become educated about your birth experience. Um, they also provide funding and you will be able to find as much information as you, you know, you might need. Um, there are also, I didn't put this on there, but a website that you can go find a doula if you're interested is of course, um, doulamatch.com or .net, um, as well as National Black Doula Association located here in Atlanta, Georgia. They have resources for um, a list of doulas, um, lactation support, postpartum doulas, uh, pelvic floor therapists, chiropractors, they have suggestions and a directory for all of those. So if there's something you're interested in, you can absolutely reach out to, um, the National Black Doula Association, and they will find you a really good doula to work with. And of course, if you are interested in hiring a doula, uh, I myself is, am a full spectrum doula. 
Um, and all my consultations are free. So of course you can reach out to me if you want more um, pregnancy tips, please follow me on Instagram, wildbirth underscore partum care. I also have digital uh, pregnancy resources um, available on my website, thewildbirth.com. Um, even an ebook on how you can interview and hire a birth, a birth doula. So if you have any questions, I am definitely open to uh, accepting questions right now. Thank you all for joining me. Okay, questions. Are doulas typically covered through insurance or is this an out-of-pocket cost to have one? So doulas, it, it's very complicated. Um, not a lot of insurances cover doulas, um, but there are some that do try to cover doulas. Right now, as far as I know, Medicaid does not cover doulas. Um, and I can't think of all of the insurances, but I know if you work for specific companies like Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, um, AT&T, if you work for these companies, they do provide doula support. Um, but it also depends on the organization in which the doulas um, have been educated through. Um, so to make a long story short, usually it's out of pocket. But the good thing about um, doulas, and I know for specifically for myself, um, we offer payment plans. We offer um, sliding scale fees. So if you had um, issues where you can't afford to pay the full cost, we do offer grants. Um, and we do really try to work with everybody, everyone's budget. We offer packages that hopefully, you know, meet your financial goals as well as meet your childbirth, uh, childbirthing goals. How does one become a doula? So there are so many organizations out there. Um, and that is a really good question. So I trained through the organization Mama Glow, um, and at first, in the beginning, it's very daunting to try to find an organization that aligns with you. Um, a few organizations that I know offer doula training, of course, Mama Glow, um, National Black Doula Association, they have local um, doula tr uh, trainings here in Georgia. Um, birthing Advocacy Doula Training, that's one specifically if you um, have like, you identify as LB LGBT or African-American, they are more so inclusive and they offer a ton of scholarships. Um, I would suggest, and I usually don't suggest this, but getting on Facebook and joining Facebook groups that are specifically for doulas. And you will be able to find trainings hosted by everybody that may align with what your goals are, what your beliefs are. Not every training is created equal. Some are very expensive, some are very inexpensive. And it truly de depends on what your goals is as a doula. I always recommend that if you decide to become a doula, that you really want to get into a mentorship program following your training. Because doula trainings, they have they offer a lot of information. But what happens is that you there's a disconnect from taking the training into getting clients. Um, being a doula is a business. So it's not just becoming a doula and now you're working with families. You also have to understand the business aspect and that's where the mentorship um, programs come into play. With a high level of stress and mental health illnesses due to COVID, what strategy, strategies can you offer to relieve stress during and after pregnancies? Um, so when it comes to stress during and after pregnancy, one of the, the most important things that I, I tell families to do is identify a provider that can provide um, therapy sessions for you, um, which sometimes that just seems like a lot more work and adds to the stress. But once you start to see um, a licensed provider, they really do help you decide if you're experiencing just high stress levels, or is there an actual mental illness going on? Um, COVID, of course, is very stressful, especially for pregnant individuals. You find yourself in hospitals where you can't have as many people you want there, um, and you don't exactly know what your options are, and you don't want to go into hospitals at all. Um, and this comes with building that birth plan. Um, 
a lot of things that I just I tell my clients to do um, when they're experiencing high stress levels is journaling. Um, I send them breath work extra exercises. Um, prenatal yoga is really, really um, fun, even though, you know, you can get a little anxious, you know, it's a little, it works you out a little bit, but it really does help you with stress. Um, and then, of course, taking time for yourself. Um, pregnant women, just like any other woman, we have to work. We have to probably take care of children. Um, we hardly take time for ourselves. And you really want to make taking time for yourself and self-care an intentional practice. Um, don't allow too much time to go by without telling people what you need. And that's why having a doula is so important because we're literally here for you to tell us what you need. And in that moment, even just relieving that stress on yourself by communicating with somebody else is a stress reliever in itself. Have any more questions? Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in from our um, YouTube audience or okay. anywhere else. But I am definitely most appreciative of the information that was provided today. A lot of great information and a lot of great resources that I'm hoping that our patrons and our um, audience are able to look into, investigate a little more, and see if they can find something for themselves. So I want to thank you, Miss Crystal Reese, yes. for presenting. But before you go and before we end here, I wanted to share my screen for a brief moment just to sure. share some resources that we do have. Okay, give me one second. And so for our audience, our um, viewing audience, just know that the Clayton County Library System offers an array of books uh, pertaining to pregnancy. And one of them that we currently have that's available um, for checkout is Healthy Beginnings giving your baby the best start from preconception to birth. And that is written by um, Nan Shurmans. So again, you know, if you have your library card, whether you're here in Clayton County or outside of the county, you can always place any of our resources, any of the books on hold and pick up it to be picked up at your local library. So don't forget the library is here to support you during your pregnancy as well as Miss Reese and people like herself. So thank you again, Miss Reese. You're welcome and thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate okay. y'all listening. Okay, great. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.